The People's Republic of China fields the world's largest active military. This buildup of force has not gone unnoticed by competing superpowers like Russia or the United States. For China's smaller neighbors like Taiwan and the Philippines, this threatens to destabilize the Indo-Pacific region as a whole. Major powers continue to leverage their influence over global hegemony, but China's military is preparing for the conditions of a multipolar world, a world in which no single country may call the shots. In 1927, what we now know as the Chinese People's Liberation Army, or PLA, started as the Workers' and Peasants' Red Army. The force was less a fully organized military and more of a group of various militias pulled under a common name. However, as the Chinese Civil War dragged on, these groups began to restructure and expand into a more centralized regime. Barely six months after winning the Chinese Civil War, the newly reformed PLA went on to fight in the Korean War against the United States. During this conflict, the PLA suffered heavy losses, but were able to gain support from the Soviet Union and eventually turn North Korea into a buffer zone between China and the US beyond. I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Holzkern, the world leader in watches, jewelry, and accessories made from natural materials like wood and stone. It's the historian's canvas and your most valuable asset. Holzkern watches are not just unique timepieces, they're a piece of history, merging classic elegance with modern ingenuity and natural materials, making every moment count. Holzkern's high-quality watches, jewelry, and accessories are the perfect gift for any occasion or style, with each individual piece an unforgettable expression of the timeless connection you have with a loved one or partner. In addition to my own Holzkern watch, which I wear regularly, I recently ordered this beautiful rosewood skin purse as a gift for my wife. All pieces are guaranteed for 24 months, and ordering online is easy with free, duty, and import tax-free shipping to the US and most EU countries within two to five days. Followers who use our special discount code, armchair15 at checkout, will receive 15% off of all products. Support our channel by clicking the link down below and choose your own personal piece of nature for everyday life with Holzkern. Cementing China as a big player on the world stage, the Korean War provided lessons that would help them begin modernizing their army. This process began with a reform program aimed at transforming the army into a force capable of defending China and its neighbors from what they saw as Western influence. Following the Soviet model, these reforms included institutional changes, command centralization, improvements in technology, strategy, and even the formation of a nuclear program. By the late 1960s, China's alliance with the Soviet Union had fallen apart as the Soviets were viewed with increasing suspicion in regards to national security. As border clashes broke out between the two blocs, other countries like India and Vietnam found themselves challenging Chinese territorial claims, which in turn led China to a rapid expansion of personnel numbers that ballooned over 6 million, the highest point in its history. Existing strategies for China's defense at first relied on attrition and guerrilla warfare against invaders like the Soviet Union. But by the 1980s, the PLA changed their strategy toward a more aggressive and mechanized approach. This shift toward mechanization and high maneuverability in the field was given further support by military planners in the 1990s who had witnessed its potential in American demonstrations during the Gulf War and Taiwan Strait Crisis. Since its formation, a key distinction of the People's Liberation Army compared to other military forces is its direct subordination to the Chinese Communist Party rather than the state. In effect, this makes the goals of the state and the party essentially the same. The 2019 Chinese White Paper highlights this distinction, noting that the PLA is entrusted with providing strategic support for consolidating the leadership of the CCP and the socialist system. 
Since becoming president in 2012, Xi Jinping has pushed several PLA reforms to assist the party in achieving what he calls the Chinese dream, hoping to transform China into a great power. These changes haven't come without their problems, however. The last time China fought a war was in 1979, meaning that it lacks any real modern combat experience. China may have significantly modernized and expanded its arsenal since the 70s, but it hasn't been able to reliably test any of these new weapons in the field, leaving many of their capabilities technically unproven. Furthermore, PLA training and exercises have also been criticized for being overscripted and failing to simulate realistic combat conditions. More recent steps have been taken to improve training, but only time will tell if these are effective. Still, both the CCP and the military have a plan in place. As per the most recent Chinese white paper, the PLA's defense strategy covers a range of priorities which include safeguarding national sovereignty, containing independence movements, and securing interests over maritime rights, cybersecurity, and even outer space. Of these duties, the most controversial is their opposition of Taiwanese independence and the containment of the Taiwanese movement throughout the globe. For the Communist Party, this is important as the Taiwanese question feeds directly into the protection of Chinese sovereignty over Taiwan and other territories throughout the South China Sea. Part of this requires China's military to be capable of carrying out active defense, a long-term strategy that is defensive at the strategic level of war, but often offensive at the operational and tactical levels. The Chinese intervention in Korea against the US is an example of this defensive measure in action. In more recent years, the military buildup and aggressive presence in the South China Sea is another example of China exercising this active defense for the sake of national sovereignty. China has undoubtedly made huge strides in enhancing its power projection capabilities. Nevertheless, it's essential to acknowledge that it currently falls short of matching the power projection standards of global giants such as the United States. One key area where China faces limitations is in its strategic airlift and aerial refueling capabilities, which significantly lag behind those of the US. China's aircraft carrier fleet is still in its developmental stages, lacking the extensive operational experience and strength of its American counterparts. Economically, China's influence continues to expand across regions like Central Asia, Africa, and Latin America, but its military power limits China's reach only to its immediate vicinity, making it predominantly a regional military player at this stage. Another distinction that makes the PLA somewhat unique is in the name itself. The People's Liberation Army, although containing the word army, actually encompasses the entire Chinese military. Under this system, each of the military's five main branches are designated as within the PLA. It's an approach that exemplifies China's commitment to a unified military strategy and helps reflect its principle of being the armed wing of the Chinese Communist Party first and foremost. The oldest of these branches is the ground force, equivalent to a traditional army. Also known as the PLAGF, its basic operational structure starts with the group army, operating much like a corps in other armies, but with more flexibility and responsiveness in mind. Group armies are assigned to one of China's theater commands, each controlling 12 brigade-sized organizations, six being combined arms brigades, and the other six being support brigades. Of the two, the combined arms brigades make up the bulk of the PLAGF's combat power, as each brigade utilizes roughly four to six battalions featuring integrated artillery, air defense, headquarters, and logistics units. Since the mechanization that began in the 1980s, the once immense personnel numbers of the ground force have shrunk by 55%, leaving an active total of around 975,000 troops. Under current conditions, the ground force is responsible for both domestic and multinational security, ensuring stability and engaging in rescue or disaster relief operations when called upon. 
The PLAGF possesses a large stockpile of military equipment, which has been rapidly modernizing over the past several years. They are estimated to maintain over 4,800 main battle tanks, with the most common being the second generation Type 96 and 96As, supplemented by a number of the newest third generation Type 99A tanks. The ground force also operates around 7,700 Type 04 and Type 08 infantry fighting vehicles and a host of other equipment from APCs to assault guns and attack helicopters. The People's Liberation Army Air Force, or PLAAF, is China's air service branch responsible for the PLA's combat air power. Originally tasked with interception and air defense, the PLAAF has expanded considerably in recent years, transitioning into a strategic air force capable of defensive and offensive operations, with both happening at increasing distances from the Chinese mainland as time goes on. These operations can be attributed to its overall size, despite other branches such as the Naval Air Arm or Ground Forces fielding their own assortment of air assets, it is the PLAAF that constitutes the third largest air force in the world. Still, even with these advances, the Air Force's limited capabilities outside of Chinese airspace means that they are far less concerned with air dominance than the Americans. For the PLAAF, simply denying airspace to an adversary is considered adequate. To enforce their boundaries, the Air Force operates a wide variety of aircraft, totaling 2,566 airframes. These include a multitude of bombers, fighters, multi-role, and specialized aircraft, with the total strength of the PLAAF being estimated at around 395,000 personnel. While these statistics can be staggering, it is important to note that the PLA equipment numbers are constantly changing and can be subject to a fair amount of guesswork in some cases despite the resources available. This is also the case for their operational reliability. Just because China maintains a certain number of systems on paper does not always mean that they can operate that many systems in the field. Equipment or vehicles sitting in unprotected storage may be accounted for, but it hardly makes them operational. The PLA's third and arguably more relevant branch due to their maritime activities is the People's Liberation Army Navy, or PLAN. It comprises five distinct service arms, including surface, submarine, coastal defense, naval aviation, and the Marine Corps. This formidable naval force is strategically organized into three fleets, each assigned to the Southern, Eastern, and Northern Theater commands. The naval surface combatants constitute a substantial chunk of the plan's arsenal, totaling 92 primary vessels, which include two aircraft carriers with a third in development, seven cruisers, 42 destroyers, and 41 frigates. Additionally, the Navy maintains a fleet of 142 patrol and coastal combat vessels, along with 11 large amphibious assault ships and 109 landing ships of varying sizes. The Navy's submarine force is a formidable component with 59 submarines in operation, 12 of which are nuclear-powered. While historically dominant, recent modernization efforts have shifted focus elsewhere, leaving submarine capabilities trailing behind their American counterparts. In general, the Navy has been constructing new ships at a rapid pace, making it the largest Navy in the world in terms of sheer numbers, but possesses less than half of the tonnage of the U.S. Navy. On average, this means that Chinese ships tend to be smaller than their American counterparts. U.S. Navy ships also carry more than twice as many offensive missiles. However, it should be noted that in any engagement close to Chinese waters, like Taiwan, China could deploy significant numbers of ground-based anti-ship missiles to potentially narrow this gap. Tasked with the defense of China's territorial waters, the plan has more recently put increasing emphasis on blue water capabilities further abroad, such as in the Indian Ocean, with anti-piracy patrols conducted in the Gulf of Aden since 2008, and the more recent opening of its first overseas base in Djibouti in 2017. 
Assisting this strategy is the plan's expanded personnel, numbering around 260,000 sailors, complemented by 26,000 naval aviation experts and 35,000 dedicated marines. Notably, the naval aviation arm of the Navy remains relatively nascent, both in terms of capabilities and doctrine. These aviators mainly operate carrier-based J-15 fighters, which are navalized aircraft based on Soviet designs, an emerging strategy which is still evolving as the Navy comes to terms with their air arm potential. Beyond the three main branches, two other services contribute equally important duties to the military. One of these is the People's Liberation Army Rocket Force, or PLARF, which is responsible for overseeing China's ground-based ballistic missiles. This includes responsibility over much of the nuclear arsenal. Though the CCP maintains a no-first-use nuclear policy, which stresses the use of nuclear weapons only in self-defense, and that they would not be used to instigate a nuclear conflict. In general, China does not publicly share the size of its nuclear arsenal, so it is impossible to know for sure the number of warheads it possesses. Many estimates put the size of the nuclear stockpile between 200 and 400 devices. In terms of personnel, the total strength of the rocket force is estimated to be over 120,000. Alongside the PLARF, the military's fifth branch includes the Strategic Support Force, or SSF, which was established during the military reforms of Xi Jinping. The exact role of the Strategic Support Force has been kept vague by official Chinese sources. An example of this is the ongoing debate on whether the SSF represents a full-service branch of the PLA or a sub-service branch. This also means that their exact role within the military is somewhat murky. Outside observers are confident that the SSF is primarily engaged in space and information operations, including cyber, electronic, and psychological warfare operations. The known assets of the SSF include just four Haxin class cutter ships used mainly for missile and satellite tracking. The total strength of SSF personnel is estimated to be around 175,000. Lastly is a lesser-known sub-service of the military known as the Joint Logistics Support Force, or JLSF. This branch of the PLA was also created during Xi Jinping's most recent reforms, and was tasked with unifying and facilitating the logistic challenges of the PLA's numerous branches. Historically, the PLA has struggled with significant corruption throughout all of its military levels, and it remains a problem which hinders the organization today. While Xi Jinping's reforms attempt to address these issues through branches like the JLSF, the process of reorganization itself has led to its own problems. The expediency and pressure of these reforms have led to significant disruption across all of the PLA, and some experts fear that growing pains associated with reorganization will impact China's combat readiness for some time. Nevertheless, the JLSF's main duties include reducing redundancies and generally increasing efficiency within the PLA's immense bureaucracy. While the JLSF does handle some logistics for all of the PLA's branches, this is mostly just at the theater level, and individual services still remain in charge of their more localized logistics. Given the size of the PLA, it's natural for many flaws and issues to surface in full view of China's opposition. But as a military force, the PLA also boasts numerous strengths. As of 2022, the PLA's official budget was around $242 billion, making it the second best funded military in the world. However, the official budget does not fully highlight the money being spent on defense. Their biggest advantage comes in the level of purchasing power over nations such as the US or Russia, giving them more bang for their buck on military spending. The past several years have seen the PLA carry out increasingly aggressive exercises and maneuvers near Taiwan. PLA forces have also acted increasingly boldly around the entire Indo-Pacific region. As China gains increasing confidence in their military forces, these displays of power are likely to increase. Perhaps more concerningly for the West, China has also rapidly modernized and expanded its nuclear arsenal. If the PLA continues at its current pace, China could soon possess as many as 1,500 warheads. 
The year 2027 marks a significant milestone for the PLA, as China aims to complete a pivotal phase in its modernization efforts. This phase encompasses the crucial objectives of mechanization, informationization, and intelligentization within the PLA's ranks. As the ground force looks to complete its mechanization, it will likely continue to get smaller, but will grow increasingly flexible and mobile as motorized infantry and towed artillery become fully mechanized. Also likely is that individual unit sizes will shrink. The Navy will likely continue to grow, despite concerns of ships aging and requiring more maintenance, becoming increasingly capable of acting outside of China's territorial waters. Inshore defense capabilities will also be maintained, consisting of small attack boats and ground-based missiles to deter potential invasion forces. The Air Force will likely reduce the number of air superiority fighters it possesses, focusing instead on more multi-role aircraft and bombers. From its humble beginnings in the Chinese Civil War, Mao's Red Army has transformed into a military juggernaut, making it not only the largest in the world, but also the fastest modernizing force today. It's widely speculated that the PLA considers this phase of modernization as vital, potentially influencing any future actions related to Taiwan and the Pacific. The final stages of modernization are set to conclude by 2049. Thanks again to Holzcan for sponsoring this video. Support our channel by visiting the link in the description and use our special discount code armchair15 at checkout to receive 15% off of all products.